Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, so today's video here, I just want to do a super quick uh, rundown of how I do flats. And I mean as quick as this video can possibly be. So I'm going to try to cut through the crap and just get into it. The reason why I wanted to show this is uh, over the last few streams, some people seem to have a little bit of confusion uh, and the dreaded flatting process of coloring a comic page. I get it. It sucks. So we're in Manga Studio 5 here. Um, and really, I want to just show you like my, I don't know, it's not not secrets or anything, but let's get into it, and I'll just show you how simple it can actually be, okay? Uh, and this is Clip Studio Paint, or Manga Studio 5 uh, for Photoshop. It's similar, uh, but Manga Studio, in my opinion, is far superior for flatting comics, or illustrations, period. Okay, so if you can see right here, my ink slayer. This would be like uh, your traditional drawing stuff. So if you scan an image in, if you work in Manga Studio, whatever you do, uh, sometimes people will have a bunch of layers for inks. What I recommend doing is flatting everything so it's just an image, okay? And you can see right here by this little uh, icon that it's colored. That's okay. It doesn't really matter for now. The first thing you're going to want to do is up at the top, go to edit. And if you come all the way down to here, it'll say change color, or sorry, convert brightness to opacity. We're going to click that. And what that's going to do is if I turn off my paper layer, check it out. In Manga or Photoshop, this would have been a, a quite a process. But basically, it got rid of all the white. Okay, so when you've got black and white, even a little bit of gray, I've done a little test. This works very well. Uh, so now, why why would that matter? Well, if you go up to your transparency layer, uh, oops, sorry, right there, and you click it, what this lets you do is let's say I don't know, you wanted to paint your character red. So now you can do that. It'll it basically allows it so that you can um, lock your color layer and do whatever you want there. Okay, in case you wanted to color your line art. The next step. This is what I would normally do. Okay, so I would make a bunch of uh, folders. You can do one, whatever you like. Uh, but I'd usually do like folders for each panel. That way. If I need to get into a specific folder, I don't have to like turn off a whole bunch of layers, okay? But for the for this tutorial, I'm just going to make a new layer, okay? And your expression color, make sure it's color. Now, I'm just going to bring this down here. Uh, for Jessup King, anyway, I forgot to say I'm coloring a page of Jessup King. Uh, I have my own flats already done here. So it's super quick for me to do this as opposed to opening up multiple files. I recommend you do this if you've got like main characters or something uh, in all your stuff, okay? So what I normally do is pick like a color. It really doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to start with the light blue. And the first thing we're going to want to do is basically draw the entire character, okay? Now there's, uh, in my opinion, there's three ways of doing this. The first one is if you click the paint bucket tool, uh, make sure all layers is on. There's a whole bunch of settings here. I know it's getting cut off by the screen, but play around with it. What that lets you do is you can actually, <clears throat> If your line art isn't totally closed off like mine is, right, where I've got this contour line around everything, if it's not totally cut off, you can fill, and Manga Studio will do its best to fill a gap, meaning if there was a white space here, it'll still try its best to close it, as long as it's not too extreme. But you can play around with your settings. We can um, do the flat, like the, the I, I call this sort of like a, uh, a cutout of the character as our initial flat. Um, you can do it with the paint, buck, paint bucket tool. Uh, you can make a new brush, right? Uh, and make a new one, but down here, anti-aliasing, you can turn that all the way off so that it's pixel perfect if you choose to. For me, I've noticed that it doesn't really matter just in the style that I'm drawing, but you could you can do that for like little detail areas. Or the best one um, is right here, uh, under right above the text tool, you might have like your perspective ruler there or something. If you go over to the direct line, right here, lasso fill, what this does is, if you guys are familiar with um, using a marquee tool, Right? Like a lasso marquee. If I were to go like that, it, it, you see how it's got the, the dancing ants or marching ants or whatever you want to call them. And then you could hit the fill button, right? But what this does, oops, sorry. I'm trying to delete all that. What this does is if you click over here and you go to the lasso fill tool, as soon as I let go, it auto does it. So that speeds things up tremendously, okay? So I'm, with those three tools, I'm just going to show you how I quickly uh, just block in a figure. And uh, I know some people. I mean, I guess this right here depends a little bit on how perfect you want this to be. In my opinion, uh, you know, it's just for speed. I, I find I very rarely find it that everything has to be pixel perfect whenever I go in here to do shading or, or anything like that. But again, everybody's style is a little bit different. And, you know, I'm not trying to just blow smoke up uh, Manga Studios behind. But it's insane how fast this stuff goes. So now that I'm kind of done all the, the big blocky areas, what I'll do is I'll come back in, see I got a little uh, mistake there, so I'll just use my eraser tool, bang, knock that back, and I'll come back in with that lasso fill tool that I showed you, and look how quick I can just like toss this stuff in, super quick, right, 
I don't know if we'll, we'll have time to flat the whole thing because flatting, watching people flat is probably one of the most boring things besides doing it yourself. <laughs> but it's one of those uh, necessary evils. Okay, You could theoretically just use this whole tool for the whole thing if you like. Um, instead of using a paintbrush, uh, I do use the paintbrush from time to time uh, because I have them mapped to my uh, Wacom pen. Uh, the front button is the brush, the back button is the eraser. So sometimes it's just easier for me to just press a button like that and go in there and go, okay, I missed a little detail, let's click that, right? So now that I have this, this is what I would have, this is what I'm calling like the cutout, okay? So for those of you that like to select from your flats, which is traditionally done, you know, you can just hold control and click inside the layer and you're going to get the selection you want. Now you can see in here, sometimes this bugs people. In my experience, it doesn't really matter. Uh, your line art is going to, you're going to, it's going to be covered by the line art, so it doesn't have to be perfect anyway. Plus, most times this stuff gets printed smaller resolution, um, so there's nothing glaring uh, that's happening here, in my opinion. Okay, and again, you can spend as much time as you want in here making it perfect, okay? But it's super quick. So the next thing we do is I'm going to make a new layer. Again, make sure it's color. And this is the, I guess, the secret sauce, right? Is this little layer right here, it's called Clip It Layer Below. If you click that, do you see we now have this like red line? You might have a little pink one or a different line or something. What this does is if I just pick a red so you can see, as I'm coloring in, in Jessup here, if I go outside, it'll never go past that. And that's why this is the best because now I can just go all the way through. I've already done my, my, my the hard work, right, of already establishing where certain lines are or colors, right? So I'm just going to go bang. Okay, so we've got some color here. I'm going to try to do this super quick here. I don't want to take all your guys' time. Uh, I used to dread doing flats, and uh, to a point, they're still not that fun because there's no real art in it, right? It's just, it's almost like a coloring book. <laughs> and, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I find, though, like, for the style that I have for Jessup King, once I have this, I'm just putting a shadow layer over everything, and, like, my job's done. But some of you guys, you guys might be working with gradients and, and all that kind of stuff. But no matter what, this is sort of like I, I keep saying, that necessary evil. So you can see here, I just want to show you, see all these, these little gaps here? The reason for those, are why that's happening is because on our original layer here, right? Check this out. I can just fill them in. It's not even a problem. Because you know, sometimes you can't see the stuff, um, but it's still super quick, as I found anyway, as opposed to like, going in with a lasso and like click 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 like a polygonal lasso like screw that that's too much time now what you can do is you can keep making new layers and clipping them at the layer below and that will always uh, keep it as you can see it sometimes what I'll do with like uh, this color layer is I'll just keep whoops I didn't put it on color I'll just keep all of this stuff on the same layer uh, what I mean by that is like all this fancy extra color stuff so like instead of making a bunch of layers I'll just kind of keep these all in the same layer um, because if you use your magic wand tool you can still select all that stuff it's not, not a huge deal so I'm gonna just I guess oh I get we're almost done here <laughs> you know how it goes you get super close to being finished and you're like no oh, I guess I may as well just stick around and do the rest uh, is there anything else that he's got that's black like that I don't think so he's got our silver yeah, excuse me my wand tool, or sorry, my paint bucket. So just tap the living hell out of everything. Maybe here I'll use my paintbrush, get a little quicker. And I am going, I'm trying to be pretty quick about this because I'm going to wrap this video up. I didn't I actually intended it to be like five minutes long. <laughs> but this is what I'm saying. This is how simple this stuff is. In my opinion, anyway. And I know a lot of people, they like Photoshop. And I think there's definitely, if you're comfortable in Photoshop, stick with Photoshop uh, and, and other software like that. But, I mean, what, what I'm intending here is I hope this is showing how easy this can kind of be. It's really not that tough. I'm, again, being super sloppy. You see where I'm spilling over lines, right? And he'd be done. And I would go ahead and I would do that with every character on here. Um, and then the bonus, too, is some people, they like to do like a shadow layer or something above everything. Uh, or you can do it character specific, right? So if I put it in there and, I don't know, we'll pick that color um, and we'll set it to multiply for the shadow, right? So if I'm, I'm just going to do like a really simple, you know, maybe just light everything from the top, right? And we can just con come in here and just shade everything. 
Again, I know this is really raw, but what I'm intending it to do is just to show you how simple things can kind of move along, okay? So now I'm going to leave you guys. I uh, appreciate your guys' time. And if you dug the video, please leave a like, a comment, uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Check out some of the streams we got going. Um, perhaps share this around with your art buddies and stuff. That would be great too. And until next time, you guys, keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.